Hello. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Can I have your attention, please? The minister is uh, about to walk in in about uh, 15 seconds. Immediately, he walks in and takes his seat. We'll start in less than a minute. All right, thank you very much. The Honorable Minister is here. Welcome, Honorable Minister. Yes, yes. Please, the, uh, the head of the paramilitary should be on the front row, please. No, it won't block it. They'll be seated. You'll be seated, don't worry. You won't block it. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and thank you everyone who has uh, attended this briefing today. We'll go live in five seconds. Let's make sure the doors are closed, ground rules, all the phones are also put on silent. The Honorable Minister of Interior, Obeni Rauf Areboshola, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Office of the Vice President, standing in as Chairman of the Presidential Communications Team today, Mr. Laolu Akonde, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Strategic Communications, 
Ms. Oge Funlola Modi, Senior Special Assistant to the President on General Duties, retired AIG Dr. Kayode Adoranti, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Country Risk Assessment and Evaluation, Colonel Felix Alaita, retired. All senior special assistants, special assistants, and personal assistants to the president and all members of the presidential communications team here present. May I also use this opportunity to recognize the following members of delegation accompanying the Honorable Minister for today's briefing. The Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Interior. Thank you, sir, for the correction. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Interior, Dr. Shuaib Mohamed Lamido Belgor. Permit me also to recognize heads of uh, agencies and paramilitary organizations under the Ministry of Interior that are here present. Controller General of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Ahmed Abubakar Audi. Commandant General, Command, Controller General of the Federal Fire Service, Jaji Abdu Ghaniyu. Controller General of the Nigerian Correctional Services, Haliru Nababa and Acting Controller General of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Issa Jere Idris. Finally, we also specially acknowledge the presence of all the directors of the ministry, team members, and also every other person accompanying the minister. And of course, gentlemen of the press, good morning. It is my pleasure to humbly welcome you all to the 64th session of the State House Briefing organized by the Presidential Communications Team. You may all recall that on the at the 23rd session of the briefing held on 11th November 2021, we had the honor of hosting the Honorable Minister and his team on this platform, and his presentation put a spotlight on the internal security and key reforms in the nation's immigration services and as well as protection of the borders of Nigeria. At that session, which was focused on these updates, we also try as much as possible in continuation to what the presidential communications team is doing to put the spotlight on key stripes being made by the President Muhammad Buhari led administration to ensure effective internal homeland security. The State House briefing for today, Thursday, 26 January 2023, would focus on the efforts being in place by the Ministry of Interior in the core area of internal security as well as innovations that have been introduced by the Ministry to foster collaboration amongst the security agencies responsible for internal security in Nigeria and also securing the borders of Nigeria. This session will be anchored by the Honorable Minister and he will speak to this topic through his presentation. The Honorable Minister's presentation will last for about 30 minutes, after which we will take questions from the press solely based on this presentation and issues pertaining to the Ministry's key intervention areas. At this juncture, it is my honor to invite the Honorable Minister to the podium for his presentation. Thank you. Yes. No, I will go there. Don't worry. I'll go there. I'm just. I uh, know I can. But let me let me please myself. No, I'm a senior. I'm a senior force now with my green <laughs> beard and everything. Good morning, PS uh, friends who are here. My team members and the correspondents. It's such a pleasure to have this opportunity to engage, and I want to say that. Uh, you can't have too much information. I think public service is essentially information dissemination service. The people cannot know enough. So it's so nice that there is this opportunity of engagement with the state out correspondence. We had a public outing organized by the Ministry of Information and Culture for us about four weeks ago. It got a rave review everywhere. So it's always nice to engage the press. The only wala is that at times one could be quoted out of context. Though I trust those of you who are here, you are about the best in the trade. So you are welcome. Interestingly, this might be the Validatory 
valedictory uh, engagement at this level, unless it's an emergency. Uh, if you do a count, it's about 120 days today, if not 119 days today, all told, including even Sundays, that uh, this administration will still have to serve Nigerians. But it doesn't matter. To the last second, we will be here. So I thank you for the opportunity of this engagement. I think my name is well known. I'm Abdul Rauf Adesoji Aregbeshola, and I start like this. I also be lying in a shit on the regime. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I call him the Lillahi Ladi Lam Yata Izu Aladin. Lam Yakun Lahu Shari Kun Fil Malik. Lam Yakun Lahu Waliju Min Aduli Wa Kabiri Utakbira. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata illa wa la lili azim. All those things in Arabic is simply to say that God is the greatest, and I call on him to put me through this engagement. And that there is nobody worthy of worship other than him. It's just an attestation of faith. I think I've recognized all that should be recognized. The Ministry of Interior's edition, the Ministry of Interior's second edition of the State House press briefing will highlight the achievements of President Mamadou Buhari's administration in the past eight years, less 119 days. This presentation is designed to provide a veritable source of information to showcase the achievements we have recorded. If we touch on the ministry as well as the four agencies, it supervises. The ministry oversees four paramilitary agencies and a board. And these are Nigerian Correctional Service, NCOS, under the leadership of uh, Controller General Nababa. I want you to stand up to, so I, I, when I mention your name, please stand up, let, let them see you. Let me go back, you know, let me, I will go back on that because I want it to really follow an order. I want them to see you, I want them to have impression, to, have, to, to create an impression about you, how you look, what you wear, and all of that. The ministry oversees four paramilitary agencies and a board. These are Nigerian Correctional Service under the leadership of Controller General Nababa. That's the man in charge of the Nigerian Correctional Service. Thank you. Please you can take your seat. Nigeria Immigration Service, NIS, under the leadership of uh, Acting Controller General Jerry Ahmed. Thank you. The Federal Fire Service under Jaji. Thank Controller General. Controller General. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps under the leadership of Commandant General Audi. Thank you. And the Civil Defense Correctional Fire and Immigration Services Board, CDCFIB, under the leadership, under, sorry, under the secretaryship, executive secretaryship of our lady. The board is responsible for recruitment, promotion, and discipline of officers and men of the four paramilitary agencies within the ministry. It's small, but very, very effective. It will be recalled that the current Ministry of, of Interior was first created as Ministry of Internal Affairs in 1957, the year I was born, by the colonial government. The ministry has since gone through different metamorphoses as a few successive administrations excise the Ministry of Police Affairs from it. The ministry was again merged with the Ministry of Police Affairs in 2015. 
by President Mumudu Buhari, but eventually a size from it at the beginning of Mr. President's second term in 2019. The Ministry of Interior has the mandate for formulating, implementing policies and programs that enhance internal security, public safety, create an enabling environment for foreign investors, as well as the promotion and maintenance of the integrity of the Nigerian citizenship identity, all of which are key pillars in the nine priority areas of Mr. President's administration. The ministry also has the mandate for registration of places of worship for the purpose of conduct of sanctuary marriages, issuance of expatriate quota, and permit for foreign businesses to operate in Nigeria, as well as processing applications for Nigerian citizenship and renunciation of same for the constitution of the president. As you may be aware, the focus of this administration is built around three strategy areas of security, economy and transparency, SET set. From these broad objectives, the federal government has selected nine main priority areas for intervention, and they are stabilize the macro economy, increase agricultural productivity and food security, ensure energy sufficiency, improve transportation and other infrastructure, drive industrialization, improve health education and productivity of Nigerians, enhance social inclusion by scaling up social investment, fight corruption and improve governance and provide security for all citizens. From these nine priorities, the key performance indicator of the Ministry of Interior is the provision of security for all citizens. That does not mean we do not interface with other strategic areas, but that's our own major key performance indicator. The Ministry and its agencies between 2015 to date worked assiduously to achieve the presidential and ministerial mandates by evolving approaches to internal security, public safety, and citizenship integrity, driven by innovation, people, technology, and systems, in addition to robust collaboration with critical stakeholders. We are determined to make our services available to the public in a seamless and customer-centric manner. Our promise is to keep improving on services we render to the public and delivering our mandate until the end of this administration on the 29th of May, 2023. I want to thank Mr. President and the Executive Council for the support we have received in this regard. Achievements of the Ministry of Interior. The Institute of, Institute of Domestic Security. In recognition of the mandate of the, ministry, of the ministry to foster and ensure the maintenance of internal security and citizens' integrity for the promotion of good governance for the nation. Regrettably, there is no command and control institution for the leadership development, strategic training, and the conduct of research on internal security. To fill this gap, the Institute of Domestic Security, sorry, let me check it again. To fill this gap for going has created a significant gap. I'm not, I'm not sure this is right. To fill this gap, however, which, is, which has created a significant gap in the capacity of our preliminary paramilitary institutions and other security bodies, it was realized that we need to have an institute for domestic security, which will serve as a platform to bridge identified gaps 
And for that purpose, we have a National Institute of Domestic Security located in, what is that? Urubo, very close to Elisha in Oshun. Actions have been concluded for this purpose. And what are those actions? Program and curriculum development, development of governance structure, legal and institutional framework towards the takeoff of the institute. A 45 hectare land has been secured in Elisha, Urubo specifically, to be sure, for its takeoff. Stakeholders' engagement on internal security and conflict resolution across the country. In line with the mandate of the ministry and considering the challenging security situation in the country, stakeholders' engagement on internal security and conflict resolution across the country were organized in conjunction with the relevant ministries, departments, and agencies. Implementation of the Nigerian Internal Security Public Alert System, NALAT. Nigeria Internal Security and Public Alert System, NALAT, is an integrated and single mobile application developed to assist the public access, prompt response to emergencies and public safety concerns. Capabilities of the NLAT. This include fire distress alert, fire distress alert and response coordination. Prevent the use of fire extinguisher for drug trafficking, bomb manufacturing, and concealment as well as the proliferation of small and light arms, medical alerts and joint ambulance mobilization, crime alert and joint response to joint response coordination, etc. Status of the N alert. It is an integrated mobile application developed to assist the public access prompt response to emergencies and public safety concerns. N alert is available on Android and iOS phones. This administration also established a command and control room where all alerts are monitored and coordinated real time. The ministry established a multi-agency situation room which is a centralized command and control room at the ministry for effective monitoring 24 seven and assessing internal security and public safety for the coordination, collaboration, and cooperation of security agencies under the Ministry of Interior Supervision. Deportation orders issued by the Office of the Minister. In the last two years, the Minister issued a total of 70 deportation orders for the deportation of different nationals from Nigeria due to some infraction of the order. Majority of those reported were from the Democratic Republic of Korea, Egypt, Sri Lanka, and the host of others. National celebration on the administration of expatriate quota. So national conference, not celebration, sorry. National conference on the administration of expatriate quota as at April 14, 2021. The conference had in attendance, the conference held on April 14, 2021, the conference had in attendance critical stakeholders in the administration of expatriate quota and important resolutions which has greatly enhanced. I don't know, let me, let me go through this again. The conference had in attendance critical stakeholders in the administration of expatriate quotas, and it made resolutions which greatly enhanced the efficiency and effectiveness of the delivery of services. One of these recommendations was the need to introduce an inspection regime to sanitize the sector and to enforce compliance with the guidelines, especially with regard to the Nigerian understudy program and expatriate quota racketeering. Establishment of a special task force for the enforcement of guidelines on expatriate quota. 
my office concerned about the increasing rate of non-compliance with and total disregard for the rules and regulations surrounding, surrounding the utilization of expatriate quota and rampant abuses of the facility established a special ministerial task force on December 1, 2020 to audit the level of compliance and the immigration regulation of 2017 and immigration out of 2015 as well as with administrative guidelines issued by the Ministry of Interior. Review and that body is still working. Review of the handbook on expatriate quota administration. The committee reviewed the handbook on expatriate quota administration in order to address salient issues, some of which are reduction of the 10 year lifespan of an expatriate quota position to seven, after which position must be localized. Review the requirement for the processing of the expatriate quota services and only jobs on the critical skill list will be considered for expatriate quota positions upon sufficient proof by the individual employer that the positions cannot be filled by Nigerians. Committee for the review of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has amended. The Hard Hoc Senate Committee on Review of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria commends the process of further amendment to the section of the Constitution. The committee has identified these areas of interest in the Constitution, and an example of this is the need to rectify the gap that leaves minor children of naturalized citizens without any form of citizenship. Another example is the discrimination between the privileges of male and female spouses of Nigerian citizens who desire to acquire Nigerian citizenship. The amendment of legal notices in, Ma in the Marriage Act. The legal notices contained in the second schedule to the Marriage Act have been amended, approved by the, by the President, and published in the Federal Official Gazette of 16, 16 April 2021, Volume 108. While the review of other sections of the Marriage Act has still been processed, this is a monumental achievement. As marriage, as marriage registries and federal marriage registries bring to an end the discord between local government by bringing them into the fold, recognizing and authorizing them to conduct statutory marriages upon the fulfillment of certain administrative guidelines to put in place put in place by the ministry. National Stakeholders Conference on the Administration and Conduct of Statutory Marriages. This came up May 7, 2021. This conference was held to streamline the process of conduct of statutory marriage and to inform stakeholders about innovations in the administration of marriage. Many critical recommendations arose from the conference, including the need to establish more federal marriage registries across the country. Establishment of more federal marriage registries. We commence the process of expansion of the statutory marriage registries across the country. In the period under review, five new federal marriage registries were established in Benin, Benin City, Kano Jos, Oguri, and Paracourt. We are in the process of establishing at least 20 more. Our goal is to set up at least one federal marriage, marriage registry in each of the territorial zones where statutory marriages are patronized. The objective is to make statutory marriage process easier and closer to the people who require the services. The total number of statutory marriages conducted in the period under review are, no, is, sorry, total number. The total number of statutory marriages conducted in the period of review is 138,309. While the total number of places of worship licensed to conduct statutory marriages 
is 251. Renovation of the Federal Marriage Registry in Abuja. The Federal Marriage Registry in Abuja has been renovated to an optimum standard for efficient and effective service delivery to the public, while the Koyi Federal Marriage Registry has been penciled down for a major rehabilitation. It's not just innovation, rehabilitation. That will bring it to international standard and will ensure clients have a beautiful and stress-free experience while assessing services. Approval of the National Action Plan to eradicate statelessness in Nigeria. The Ministry of Interior played a key role in the development of the National Action Plan to eradicate statelessness in Nigeria. The ministry is the, is the focal ministry for the eradication of statelessness. The shares responsibility for its implementation with the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. Both ministries jointly reviewed the draft National Action Plan and presented a memorandum requesting for approval to implement the plan from the Federal Executive Council in November 2020, which was granted. Online linkages of e CTB's platform with other portals. In order to enhance the integrity of processes for expatriate quota services and enable online verification of documentation between the various MDAs, thereby minimizing incidents of forgery, the Ministry established online linkages with the Nigeria Immigration Service portal, immigration.gov.ng, and the Federal Inland Service, firs.gov.ng. The Ministry continues to engage with Corporate Affairs Commission and the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board in order to finalize a similar connectivity. We are working on that. Introduction of Inspection Regime. The ministry, the ministry held two conferences with the stakeholders on the administration of expatriate quota and conduct of statutory marriage in April and May of 2021 and introduced the new inspection regime at the two conferences. Confirmed that the, the objective was to confirm that the utilization of approved expatriate quota are in conformity with the approval of the ministry and ensure that Nigerian graduates are engaged as understudies by the company, so as to ensure the transfer of skills and knowledge to Nigerian graduates and generate employment, which is one of the cardinal promises of our administration. Establishment of Electronic Document Management System, EDMS. The purpose of this project is to expand on the implementation of complete electronic document management system solution, which will include digitizing records and documents, transporting to the facility of centralized record storage center at companies required custodian and locations. So we will be moving files again. That's the essential focus of that. The ministry's achievement in summary the ministry has successfully concluded the monitoring and evaluation of 2020 capital projects executed by the ministry and its services, namely the main ministry, Nigeria Correctional Service, Nigeria Immigration Service, Federal Fire Service, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. A total number of 297 projects were monitored and evaluated during the period under review. The ministry's strategy retreat with the theme driving performance in achieving the presidential mandate on Nigeria's, Nigeria's internal security. This was held on Friday 10th, Saturday 11 January 2020 as the number, the first, the first of such retreat in the annals of the ministry was held on the 10th, from 10th 
to 11th of January 2020. And Zenabab And then about hotel and resort in Elisha, state of, state of Ocean. And the purpose was to bring together all the executives of the various uh, agencies and the ministry to, to, to jointly look at how we can improve our service delivery. The second was held in Quara, and the team was developing internal security and public safety towards a five-year strategic plan for accelerated national development. Again, it was successful. And we are cruising along. You data for some essential things are here, particularly marriages. Yeah. See, I want to be sure. So you have uh, highlight of uh, Nigerian Correctional Service, what they have done over the years. But I must not fail to mention to you that a major achievement of this agency is the fact that uh, we are building a unique consular facility in each of the geopolitical zones, six geopolitical zones of the country. One is almost complete, and I think we have to, well, I don't know whether you can be included. I am planning to sponsor a trip of, the, of, our, of our journalists those who are in the ministry, to take a look at what we have in Kano, in Janguza, Kano. That is almost completed. Works are ongoing and in, a, in an advanced form in the one year in Karishi, in Abuja, the other one in Buri, for River State. Work is all ongoing too in the one in Elisha. And that one is supposed to be in a woman here. I don't know how far we have gone with that. But I'm keen on reporting to you that the 3,000 inmate capacity ultra modern custodial village is, a, is, a, is an innovation that is almost on parallel. I'm not sure any such facility exists anywhere in Africa. I want to say I like to be very hyperbolic. I would, I would have said in the world, but you know, I'm careful. I don't want to be too generous with my claims. So, but I know there's nothing like that in Africa. Not and south of Sahara, no, no. It's a village, it's a, it's a coastal village. And uh, it's worth seeing to, uh, to appreciate it. Let me tell you one major highlight that I want to take home. In the facility, we don't use firewood. We use the excrement of the inmates to generate biogas to cook their food, <laughs> among others. And, and, and we, have, we, have, we have several other facilities like are, we, are, we have a small, a small, a small facility now, but we are planning a big facility that will be a university within the center, study center, that will facilitate learning of academic and vocational skills. Within the years, we bought 799 operational vehicles of various types to move uh, inmates to and from court and to run our farms as well. So we have tractors to maintain health facilities, ambulances, and we, and we have a robust healthcare system in our facilities and I'm, I'm very proud of the of the capacity and journalism of the service of the of the correctional service because they are one of the very few if not the only correctional service in the world that did not allow the penetration of the dreaded covid virus into any any other facilities 
for the entire duration of the pandemic, none, none of our facility had the infection. Yes, people may want to, we want to remind me that uh, there were six people with the, with the virus in Baoshi, I think I'm right. Yes, they had contracted the virus outside before they were arrested. Now, immediately we knew because we couldn't get in without a test. Maybe we knew that they had had the, the virus. We isolated them. So they, they were the ones with the virus. They never infected anybody within our system. And again, we treated them within our system. So none of them died. They were all cured of the, of the, of the virus. <laughs> well, according to saying that, am I trying to sell our facilities for people to work? Those who want to commit crime can commit crime and end up there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not selling anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you the level of professionalism and efficiency of our officers in the service and the, how we want to make the service uh, a very, a very, a very excellent one. Well, we have class, as I said, we are, we are, we are, we are high. We are huge in uh, food production. An, an agricultural uh, service. Well, in terms of uh, preparation, well, in, 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 to meet our core mandate of corrections and rehabilitation of our inmates, 420 inmates run various degree and postgraduate programs. 100 inmates enroll for work and echo. And uh, we, we, we equally put them through some skill acquisition programs. Details are there for you to see. That service recruited 7,745 people into the service. And we are still proposing to recruit more. We want to expand the capacity of the service to protect our centers. So we are, we, we are, we are already asking for approval to recruit two broad categories of officers, armed guards, armed squad of the service. We want to have more people, about 5,000, I can tell you. We are looking at recruiting about 2,000 people into the intelligence unit of the service. The, the approval is not yet obtained. I'm just telling you what we are planning to do before we leave. Uh, that's about the service. Well, capacity building, we have trained about 10,463 additional officers for, uh, to handle effectively and efficiently firearms. And uh, I said it earlier, whether here or somewhere, that uh, we are now mandating our, our in charge, that is officers in charge of each center, not just to carry peace to know, they must carry high capacity weapons to themselves. Before now, the officers are just officers. They don't know if they, if they, if they, if they, if they had any gunshot, they would dive under their bed. <laughs> now, I'm being honest to you, the, the, so bad. we have changed that. We have changed that. Since Kujie, we have changed that. They are all now being trained progressively <laughs> to boldly confront by themselves, to lead, to lead the uh, action of repelling whoever attempts to violate a uh, facility. And we have declared the facility red zones. And it's, it's not just red zone, uh, verbal declaration. No, you can test us. Somebody can. Somebody can test our will. Well, staff. staff welfare, during the period above, we were under review, 15,000 officers and men were promoted. Some of whom had stagnated for upwards of 15 years on one rank. New barracks and offices have been built in a number of formations, and some existing barracks and offices have been renovated to provide condu conducive living and working environment <coughs> for officers and men. And we have changed their outlook. If you, if you, CG, please, if you don't mind, let them see you. And those officers who are here, Operation Commander, please. You see, this is the, this is the, the welfare, this is the new outlook. We believe that officers should be confident, should have pride in their appearance. So they have different uniforms for each day of the week. 
This, this is what they are supposed to wear. They, they, didn't, they are not on this because they want to impress you. This is their uniform for today. And uh, <laughs> so the, their spirit is lifted and their moral very well boosted. So we are, we, are, we are actually affecting them in a way that will make them proudly serve the nation and protect our facility. Thank you, President. The list of, uh, we are, you have, we have our budgets and releases, the also promoted and what have you, they are all there. The Nigeria Immigration Service, NIS. The Nigeria Immigration Service is a body legally established by an act of parliament. The Immigration Act of 2015. It is charged with among others to ensure border security, and migration management as well as internal security functions that the president might order them to do. It is one of the security agencies under the supervision of the Ministry of Interior. As I said, Ahmed Jere is the acting controller general. The mandate is written that deliverables, framework to ease tourist and business visa, full implementation of biometric visa policy at all entry points in the country, Creation of additional border patrol bases, production of one way temporary passport, fully automated visa on arrival process, and premium website for ease implementation, provision of employment, full implementation of IPs, and issuance of passport and other travel documents. If you look at how we list this, what, you, what everybody wants to see as the main preoccupation of the Nigerian Immigration Service is the list. Is the least based on the mandate of the service and is the, and is and these deliverables, the Nigerian Regional Service has been able to achieve the following. We have reviewed the visa policy, we have simplified visa process, we have a dedicated website for everything that we do, we have incentive to attract tourists and investors, we have we are deploying biometric. Uh, visa everywhere. We are domesticating production of passports. There are, there are four businesses everywhere. We, are, we have not yet fully covered the space, but we are forging ahead. But the areas we have covered are listed for bases. We are we are pushing on on border management and control. Passport and other travel document reform. That's where we are very large because we know Nigerians are very sensitive to it. Uh, I will talk briefly on that. There is a major reformation going on in passport issuance administration. Uh, we are digitizing the process. My, my plan was to fully digitize the the Kuhi registry by the end of last year, but I've not fully achieved that. What does that mean? When this process is concluded, applicants will not need to bring anything anymore. You complete your process online completely. And by that time, you cannot you don't need an agent. There can't be racketeering. You have to hack into the system to to to, to, to access it. But now you see, no, you're fully. I'm, I'm, I'm on it, and I want to guarantee that we will do it before we leave. <laughs> that temporary passport thing is full, is done. We have the passport, but we have some issue with our sister ministry, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We shall, we are, we are, we are solving it. When it's fully solved, what, what that means is this, you know. Our, our, our citizens outside Nigeria, at times they have emergencies to come and they don't have a current passport. Yes, we have introduced a regime of returning home with a sparse passport. But uh, much as that would be a problem for us to take at our reception uh, desk here, so mere lines could be, could be difficult. I can even tell you that we are, we are, we are, we are discussing with South Africa now. South Africa does not permit the use of a passport. 
as a nation. Do contrary to ICAO regulation. Because ICAO says that every citizen of a nation, dead or alive, cannot be denied entry to his own. Which, which, which is logical anyway. But South Africa says, to, as, at, as at the last time I shared a file from uh, them through the Ministry of Foreign, Foreign Affairs, they are insisting that, look, oh, your purpose is not current. You cannot enter, you cannot be taken in or out of our space. But it's their policy. You can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't deny a nation its own national uh, policy and program. So to avoid that, we introduce what, what is called temporary electronic passport, electronic temporary passport is a one-way passport to return home. If you just have the data page of your, of your passport, bring it to the embassy. At the point of the appropriate fee, you get a temporary electronic passport, electronic temporary passport, that is almost exactly the same as your own passport, but it does not have more than one page to take you home. Those who play Monopoly. When I was in secondary school, I used to play Monopoly. There's a portion that when you land, they say go straight to jail. <laughs> they, say, they, say, they say, go, no, no pass, go, no query, just go straight to go. When you hold the electronic uh, temporary passport, the only way to go is where? Home. No branch. You can't, you can't go anywhere. But unfortunately, we are still in negotiation with uh, the Foreign Affairs Ministry. So you will see what we have done with passports. And let me, let me tell you something. This call, eh? Pastor, uh, you didn't go, look. Is there, I don't know, it's, you will see it. We, we produce one point, an unprecedented number of passports last year. By December 31st last year, we produced 1.7 million passports. In the annals, in the annals of Nigeria, that has not happened. And those who say, booklet, booklet, as I'm talking to you, we have over 200,000 booklets in our store. So we have enough booklets. We are not denying the fact that there are challenges, there are human-induced challenges. But I won't press people to know. It's not for the reasons that people uh, claim glibly that we are challenged. And even at that, if you, if you look at the number of applications vis-a-vis -vis the passports produced, we are over 80% in performance. That is, if you say, okay, how many applications did we have up to 31st of uh, December last year? And how many passports did we produce? We are, in performance, we are, we, are, we are over 80%. But then we take it as given that we produced 1.7 million passports last year. The, 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 there, are, there, are, there are proofs of what I've told you they are on the board. Human capacity development. You have it there, seminars and workshop. Passport reform is even, sorry. And then the operational provision support. Uh, everything that we need to know is in the book with you. Visa reform. Yeah. You don't, you don't. If, if, you are, if you are coming to Nigeria for a short visit, you don't need to even go to the embassy. You can do your process at home. But you must, you must process your visa online before you can uh, utilize the visa on arrival uh, system. You just don't leave your house and say you want, because the visa on arrival, you are coming to Nigeria. You, you will not be able to enter. You must initiate the process at home. And then when you have all the, all the necessary approvals, online, you can pick your bag and nobody will stop you here. So our, our budget is there and our performance on budget is there. The Federal Fire Service. In recent times, our nation and fatherland has been a target for varying forms of assault from men of the underworld. It's worthy to note that such attacks from armed bandits, kidnappers, terrorists, rapists, robbers, criminals of all sorts, were met with every tactical resistance from armed forces, joint task forces, and other security agencies with sound intelligence support. 
the president has robustly supported this service. Uh, well, it's there written, and the service, it's one of, their budget is there. They are forging on. They are building uh, very, very beautiful state commands. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are kitting their staff. Look at it. It's, you, you won't believe this is a Nigerian. Anything like this never existed before. If they, if they do their, I ask them to do parade in towns, cities, and states so that children will be, will be attracted to the service. It's a fantastic service. And uh, I'm very proud of their professionalism and capacity. Uh, we have an academy here in Abuja. Where, where is that academy? Chida. Uh, that is a postgraduate institute. It's of international repute. Students come from all over Africa. So, so. Yeah, you can see what we have done over the years. 2015, you see it, the estimated property saved, the last table. The, in all, in all, from 2015 to date, the service has saved the nation 25.322 trillion naira worth of property. Uh, and and in, in that period too, property saved is about 3.189 trillion naira, property lost. No, valued by them is about 3.18 trillion naira. But saved is 25.3. And uh, number of lives saved, 2,144. Number of lives lost, 366. Number of incidents, 11,109. It's an amazing service. And I'm very proud of them. <laughs> the blue men, the blue men. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps. Well, uh, I, I, people don't really appreciate how effective this, people's, uh, this, this call is. I would say, I'll just speak lightly on something. In terms, of, well, probably I should be careful because that's not their core mandate. So I should be careful. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want anybody to look at them and fight them. But they are very, very effective in a uh, collection of intelligence. Amazingly effective. <laughs> yes, you see them everywhere, but they are they are they are an amazing tool for guiding very very actionable and uh, reliable, credible intelligence. Let me leave it at that. You see their appropriation and their performance. What are their mandates? Protection of critical national assets and infrastructure, public and private utilities, and the working environment. Licensing, renewal, and monitoring of private guard company. Monitoring, investigation, and, and for stalling any plan out of terrorism. Embarking on, on information and actionable intelligence gathering across the country. They are very, very effective. Equipment and equipment of Recruitment, deployment, promotion, and discipline of their staff, and, and they, are, they are fantastic uh, musical band. If you, I don't know whether it's commercialized. If you want to dance all sorts of music, and you have an occasion, get to them. They play all sorts of music, all genre of music. They play, they, they play the yoruba. <laughs> they play, they play the yoruba. They play the any form. Just they are wonderful. Once in a while, when I want to entertain myself, I go to them, they play for me, I dance, dance, dance. <laughs> when I'm tired, I leave the place. So you will see the list of what they have done, they are building, they are, they, are, they, are, they are making, they are committed to effective welfare, consideration of their staff, they train them, so everything is there. And, uh, they, they are recruiting as well. One is even ongoing now. I know all of you are interested, but there is no to don't waste your energy. Everything is now digitized, so you apply online. The kinds will be screened on, and I, I, I will tell you. You, are, you report everything, so I'll be careful what I say, so I don't report that. Uh, 
<laughs> so I'll just say that uh, don't bother to even meet us now. Wait till when the examinations are conducted. So those of your of your candidates that scale through that examination order, and the exam is not conducted by any one of us. It's conducted by jam. And they get the, they get result as they finish. So it's also, depending on where you are from and the quota level there. So uh, my advice is just tell you whoever you are recommending, or whoever you want to employ, tell them to prepare hard for the job. If you don't pass, nobody can help them, even if they are my children. <laughs> the list of what they have done, recruitment employments, they are. Uh, and they are they are they are they are quite uh, they are quite effective in the in the Niger Delta Basin, uh, preventing, uh, exposing, and uh, controlling any 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 attempt to disrupt our crude oil supply. And what have you? So the list of what they have done is there all over the place. So, and they are here, all of them are here to answer your questions. Uh, they are not only effective on land, they are effective in the waters as well. There is a, they have a unit called Agro Ranger, which is, uh, which is meant to protect investment in agriculture. And I call it they are the leading agency in safe school initiative. Uh, we, we have a special squad for women. I must not fail to say that by them. They, they even have a policy on female. The Civil Defense Correctional Fire and Regulation Board division is there. They are, they, they, as I said, promotion, recruitment, and discipline of staff in all the agencies. So the list of the performance is there. I think I've done enough. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Please, can we give him another round of applause? Um, because of how long the presentation was, it's about 115 pages. Um, we have copies of the presentation that will be distributed at the end of the session today. So all the numbers that we need, the compendium of data, pictures, and all the achievements will be uh, distributed. We also have the soft copies, and uh, we'll make sure everybody gets it so that we can report uh, appropriately and also accurately. Honorable Minister, we're ready for the questions. Well, let me let me quickly say something that I forgot. This is very very important. You know, I said in the opening of what the ministry handles that we process confirmment of citizenship on non-Nigerians, and we process renunciation of citizenship. There are, are two opposites. Non-Nigerians that want to be Nigerians, we process for fake approval, and Nigerians that for whatever reason want to renounce their citizenship, we, 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 we equally process. So at, at the appropriate time, if questions are asked, either the peers or the director will answer you robustly on that. You should be interested in that. And questions, answers will be made. It is omitted here. They will answer you effectively at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you once again, Honorable Minister. We'll go straight to the questions, the first set of four questions. We'll start uh, from Raliat Adesua. Juliana and uh, Stephen will take the next set.
Пошли, пошли, пошли. Thank you. Uh, yeah, she'll go after me. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adesu. I work with Arise News. Um, thank you for your very elaborate uh, breakdown of what the ministry has been doing in the last seven plus years. But Honorable Minister, what would you say is responsible, despite all of this that you're doing, what would you say is responsible for the unprecedented number of prison breaks we have seen under this administration? And particularly the Kuje attack, which you mentioned once in this presentation, we are still waiting the outcome of that investigation. Uh, it was a daring one, but it's taken this long to even find out why. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Ralia Tadenekon from Classic FM and The Beat. Uh, my question is actually to the Fire Service Controller General, and I would like him to explain uh, the, uh, the fire service regulations, especially with regards to public buildings. Just this morning, we had another fire incident at um, Balogun Market in Lagos. This has actually been a yearly occurrence. Last year, we had Next, Ebano, and the rest, and so many others across the country. What is the fire service regulation? Uh, and the service actually doing about all these fire incidences. And maybe, is there any form of sanctions to the builders? To the builders? Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Um, my question is on, um, during your presentation, you did, Juliana, sorry, Juliana, of the Sun newspapers. Thank you, sir. Um, during your presentation, you did mention about um, what your ministry is doing to address um, passport scarcity and all that. So I'd like to know, I know there was a directive from Mr. President for minting and printing to print international passports to avoid this scarcity and associated problems. So, Four years after that directive, which was given on June 24, 2019, we are yet to see um, action on that. So what is preventing the implementation? Because um, to avoid, or some people might perceive, uh, you know, it's a deliberate uh, effort to, uh, to frustrate the implementation. I would like to hear from you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Minister. My name is Stephen Angolu. I write for the Punch newspapers. My question is about incidences where, where we've seen that after prison breaks, some of those escaped inmates go back to the people who testified against them for some form of retribution. We've seen some of those cases, especially in Bin Edo, Benin, uh, Benin, Edo State, where in 2020, after the jailbreak, some of the people, some of the inmates went back to the people who testified against them in court for retribution. What are you doing to protect witnesses who testify against people in court? You also talked about the 70 experts who were uh, deported back to their countries for various infractions. Can you be a bit more specific uh, about the various infractions that necessitated their deportation? Thank you very much. Huh? What is responsible for the jail? I I don't want to be seen as a as a as a as a stormy petrol. But this question you have asked it more than one thousand times here. Whenever I whenever I came here, you asked the same question. So I see it as a no. Is the, you have asked me this question one million times. I will answer you. 
I will answer you. No, don't worry. No, don't worry. I will answer you. No. He said, it's simple. It's the season. No, simple. Don't, don't say, I, I know you don't want to hear it. It's the season. Uh, had we had what we are having in Nigeria today, in Nigeria, and it's global. People tend to just uh, say, it's like asking, why, how do, why, 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 why are there assassinations in America? Bad as it is. It's horrible. But in America, people get killed every second. Every second, people are killed in America. In California State, within the last, within, within the last one week, no, 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 20 people have been killed. Three, no, in, in California alone, 20 have been killed. You now ask why? If you want to really go to the etymology, you, you, may, even, you may even want to go to climate change. <laughs> Livelihood is affected. Things are hard. And those who cannot, make, who cannot manage their own stability, resources, those sort of things. You can't say there's no terrorism in Nigeria. We are managing it. You can't say there's no poverty in Nigeria. We are managing it. It is because of the level of insecurity in Nigeria. And we are rising to it. It's as simple as that. But I know that is what you want to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I've answered you. You want to ask them, no, there's nothing to eat. The, que the question you are asking, you know the answer. You know the answer. Huh? There, 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 there is tension. Nigeria, Nigerians, just like other cities of the world, were kept in communicado for 90 days straight. Let, let's, let, let's look at COVID alone. Then the remaining 120 days, on and off, on and off. Do, don't you think that those things will have impact on society? And anyway, how to assess a government is this? Sorry. What did we not do? As of today, there is no single inmate of our uh, facilities that is not captured biometrically. So, and that's the best we can do. We are still working on DNA, which, is, which again is another way of identifying them. We have met with us, all, all agencies, all institutions that can use the biometric we have to trail and help, help us arrest them. They are doing their best. But the most effective agency in capturing those, uh, those fugitives, those who, who escaped from our, of our custody, is see the police force. They are doing wonderfully well. Using, using the old method anyway. The technology that we believe will help us get them quickly is, is it not as effective as, 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 as we expect. But as I normally tell people, they can only run. They cannot hide. If, if, they, if, they, if they go out of circulation for now, because they cannot change their biometric, whenever they come out, they will be exposed and therefore arrested if they have not died. So my sister, we are doing the best we can to ensure, one, that it will be difficult for anybody to attack our facilities. You may, you may not know that some had attempted and we have sent, back to them, we have sent them back to their makers. So, and, 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 and just take it. It's, not, it's no longer game as usual. We are fortifying, we are, sorry, we are equipping our men to on their own defend those facilities. And the sister agencies that we have are equally hoping their capacity to protect and defend our facilities. And we are improving the design of our facilities to make it almost impregnable. So I, I mean, we, we, it's sad. We are, we are not happy that the, 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 the facilities are, but it's a function of the season that we will be deceiving ourselves if we don't want to admit. And I don't, I have, there, 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 there is a popular maxim from school, tell no lie, claim no easy victory. It's not mine. So we are up to it. Whoever attempts to dare our, our will will not leave to tell the story.
Many. Simple. Many. If, if you have to hear, yeah, very many. For details, the CG will tell you. But that was, if, I, if, I, if I said many, it was only we are not, we are, I've told you, look, what is essential is what steps did we take? None of the inmates of our facility, either awaiting trial or convicted, are without their biometrics captured. With that, NIPS should help us, and we have met with them. NCC should help us and the service providers, because is, is, why did we, uh, probably most of these things, even if you hear me, don't hear them. So that people don't now use it to hide them. If you have your biometrics, it means you are exposed. It means, no, let me, I'll manage it. If you, if you, if you have your biometrics, you are exposed. You are exposed. And let me leave it at that. So it starts with all of us. There is no international airport to get to today that you, that, you, that you not have the photographs of all these things. They are on our, on, on, all these people. They are, they are on our, on our, on our web page. Papers carry them, they are, they, are, they are on all social media platforms. So what I'm making is this, it's, it's our collective effort. If you are all, if you are all committed to it, in no time, we'll get them back. But what I can say, which is valid, is that they can only run. They cannot hide. The go governments, governments, not only our government, every government is patient. Is more patient than the vulture. Because government does not have aspiration. Government will cease to be only when the world ceases to exist. For that reason, they will be identified, apprehended, and brought back to where they should be. One of them attempted to be too clever. After, after running away, realizing that he has, uh, he has one more month to stay, returned by himself. He thought, would be, he thought with, with that, we would just leave him to go. No, we have taken him back, not to where he escaped from, to another place. We are taking him to, Kujie, to a magistrate court for fleeing from lawful Custody. That's a separate uh, <laughs> charge. And he's not going to benefit from what he has done. He will, still, he will have to spend every day. He escaped from the place as a, as, as, as a given punishment. So he's not, he thought that by coming back, he would only stay for one month. And at the end of the thing, you know, so this will tell you that we are not as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as relaxed, you know, as lax as we assume. We are taking every step to ensure that whoever attempts to dare our will will pay squarely for it. Thank you. For our regulation, CG will tell you. But uh, what's important is this. <laughs> whoever is, uh, is literate, not even extensively uh, educated, whoever is literate, and is conscious of his own life, must know how to protect themselves. But the CG fire will tell you. Part of production, I said it in my speech, that we are working very, very hard to actualize the localization, domestication of passport bookless production. Protection of witnesses, the, the punch man. You didn't tell all the truth, only one man. Bado, it was Bado, that one man even escaped and had to go back but interestingly, that man has been listening now. I'm, I'm responding to you. You said several. No, no. Painful as it is. Only one person did that painfully. Yes, he went to attack the witness. He was actually the person who, who reported him. Not, 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 not the, he, he, he robbed him in the police, and somebody went to identify him. So, well, uh, it was painful that that happened. But we must situate what really led to it. It was the NSAS thing in October that led to the jail attack, which the, some of the inmates exploited to escape. Uh, he's been apprehended, and he's back on the death row. So, so simple. There's nothing to it. So that is it. There are other questions. Bring them up. Oh, deportation. OK, I didn't get that. Details. Well, no, no, your question is, what are the causes? Uh, what are the causes of the deportation? 
extremely confidential. What is important is that they have been deported. Thank you. Should he CG answer? Yeah, CG should answer. Okay. The Honorable Minister, sir, the Permanent Secretary, and the Okay, okay. Is it okay there? The Honourable Minister, sir, the Permanent Secretary, all protocol duly observed. The regulation of the fire of the fire service. The mic. Eh? the mic. Okay, sorry. The regulation of the fire service, as per building construction, says that uh, whenever any building is being is about to be constructed. The design of that building in relation to the safety in that building must be evaluated by the Federal Fire Service. There is a lot to that effect. By, 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 fire by fire service. By the Federal Fire Service. And the State Fire Service, yes. So there is a. Now the state. Yes. So must be evaluated by the fire, by fire service in Nigeria. As the minister said, we have the federal fire service and we have the state fire service. But in most cases, most of the building owners fire. So you not say that there, there is a regulation. It's not that there is no regulation, it's that people refuse to comply with the regulation. Thank you very much. Uh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next set of questions, please. One. We all, we all tend to, we all tend to just forget. I think the military, no, let me, let me say something. Our, 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 our engagement with the military has really, has really affected our appreciation of the structure of Nigeria. Please, gentlemen of the press, Nigeria is a federation. Please, for goodness sake, Nigeria is a federation. If you appreciate that, you will know that what you're even asking him to talk, tell you about, it's not his jurisdiction. States, states, states have their absolute control over their territory. We can only help them by supporting them, and we are supporting them. If that's the when the federal service, when the federal fire service was established, it was established only for Lagos, and that was why, when it came into being in the fifties, nineteen fifteen or thereabout, it was a department of the police, Lagos Police, to support. Them because I must emphasize this: if you want to really develop capacity, our investment really should go into sophisticated uh, equipment to support the state, like area fire capacity, area fire fighting capacity, where we could lift huge quantity of uh, 
uh, solutions to suppress huge fire, to support the state. But are the states ready? I'm sorry to say, so most of what we are charging, you are, you are, they are state matters. Even in Abuja, there's a government in Abuja outside them. There's an FCT. Whose responsibility is to take care of Abuja? We are only supporting. We are not shaking our responsibility. There is a shatter developed by us, sent to all the states. We have regulations very well sent to all the states. But we can only support the states in administration of their of I mean compliance and whatever in their states. I so submit. Thank you. We'll take the next set of questions. I've mentioned you, um, Emmanuel Anule, Antonio Almen, and uh, Gloria. That's the first, uh, second set of four. Okay, you have the papers. Uh, the, paper, the paper is very, very elaborate on your question. So, I Okay. Yes, Honorable Minister, my name is the Dr. Anule Emanuel, arrived for AFP News Agency. Honorable Minister, can you speak on the issue of um, missing persons in the Northeast? Uh, the register with the International Committee of Red Cross and the Nigerian Red Cross indicates that about 25,000 people, Nigerians, are still missing. Um, your ministry, uh, through a presidential committee, in 2021, launched the Missing Persons Register, registry, or you call it register, I don't know, uh, with the Minister of uh, Women Affairs, and uh, I think humanitarian, yes, as members of that committee. Uh, is this register or registry effective? And if it is, if this register is effective, um, is it all about the Northeast or is it intended to capture missing persons across Nigeria? And if that is so, apart from these figures from the ICRC, and the uh, Nigerian Red Cross. Do you have updated numbers of missing Nigerians relating to conflicts? Thank you. Dr. Anule Emmanuel. Anule Emmanuel. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, sure. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yes. AFP, AFP, yes. P.I. Ajons France Press. Good. <laughs> okay, th thank you, Honorable Minister. My, my name is Tony I. Lemon. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, I write for Business Day. Okay. My question has to do with your uh, statement on renunciation of citizenship. Um, is it possible for us to have some figures of how many Nigerians that have voluntarily renunciated their own citizenship? And then the issue of uh, Jakba. Yes, no, it's still on the, the same him, renunciation. Him. Uh, it's big enough to ask two questions. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> of recent, we have seen a large, I mean, uh, be reported that many Nigerians are leaving this country. How have that impacted on what your ministry is doing in terms of passports and other issues, sir? Thank you. 
Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Gloria Umezoke from Channels TV. So the last time you were here, you mentioned that the criminals are a step ahead of the federal government in terms of capacity and whatnot. And I know that technology is still an issue, a major fundamental issue for you guys, particularly the NSCDC. You said that, that um, they perform optimally. Would you still say the same right now, particularly when you know that technology is big? We do not have enough to cater for crimes. We have crude oil theft and the, the likes of it. Thank you. Well, me you talking to you, tell who, who followed? Missing specialist. Yeah, uh, the doctor, doctor from uh, AFP, your, your, your references are wrong. And that was why I was insisting, I want to be sure that, uh, <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, doctor. Now, I will explain to you, your references are wrong. We did not launch any register in the ministry because it is not, it's no longer the minister's responsibility to do what you have, what, what you referred to. There is a whole ministry dedicated to that. That's the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian uh, Services, Disaster Management, and Social Affairs, I think. So that's the ministry responsible for what we have elaborately spoken about. But of course, all ministries work together. We are, we are working with that ministry to ensure that effectively a register is developed and is properly updated. So I agree with you that there must be a register of missing persons, which will be regularly updated so thank you for that you said you said my ministry launched it i said your reference was wrong doctor doctor Okay. That's what I'm telling you about. I've, I, listen, the only, the only, we have two operational doctor. Listen now. I have no reason. Uh, uh, me, doctor, calm down. Calm down. I have two, besides, besides service departments, I have two operational departments. I have the Department for Joint Services, I have the Department for Citizenship and Business. The Director of Joint Services is not here because all the services are here. The Director of C and B, Citizenship and Business is there. I asked that. No, don't worry, don't worry. I asked that. When did you launch Missing Persons Register? And she told me very clearly that she never knew of it. So, as far as this ministry is concerned, and this is the PS. So we, you, I said your reference to us is wrong. Yes, all these things, most of the things that are humanitarian, most, I didn't say all, used to be with us from years back. But from 2019, when the president created that ministry, the ministry is not, is not responsible for such things. We are no longer responsible for, for uh, such assignments. Refugee Commission is no longer with us, just to be with us. It's no longer. So if you don't manage refugees, if our link refugees, uh, security and documentation at our own level, if we cannot therefore resolve for people who are missing, I agree with you. There will be there should be a register for missing persons. But I'm, I'm, we are not the ones who are responsible for that. And I cannot accept responsibility for what I'm not so shut for. That was I've just told you. If my language was offensive, I don't mean to offend you. So thank you.
Lo don't worry, don't go bury, go bury, don't worry at it. No, let me answer, let me answer. No. Don't let him assume we are, we are running away from his question. We do not have the figure you want of citizens that have renounced their citizenship. But you will get it in the next one hour. You will get it precisely. You will get it in the next one hour. We, we have the figure. I will give it to you. Thank you. But it's not, it's not available now. Nigerians live in the country and the impact on passport issue, issuance. Mm -hmm. hey, does Nigerians live in the country? How has it impacted passport issuance? Yeah, okay. The second question is uh, what is the impact of Jaqua? Because Jaqua is not an English word. I, I, I hope you know. What is the impact of JAPA on passport issuance? I want to believe it has a huge impact. There is a heavy demand on uh, passport uh, issuance, heavy demand on passport. And if you look at the, the, the trend, it's more in the south than in the north, if, if you want to really get to it. So and we're responding to it. I've told you that uh, we, 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 were, we, we issued 1.1 1. 1, 1, 700,000 passports last year. And uh, that's, that's a clear indication of the fact that uh, there's a heavy demand on passport issuance. So uh, there's no issue about that. It's clear. It's very clear. Uh, we are, the demand for passport is rising and growing. So that's, that's as simple as that. Okay. And the last one is... Technology and NSCDC. Okay. <laughs> probably I should let them answer. But let me try. If you're not satisfied, probably it could help me. I ne well, if I said that... The, what, what I said, which, which Channel Lady wanted to take out of context, is that look, the criminals everywhere in the world, not only in Nigeria, their effort is to beat the system. That is a, is a, is a, is, 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 is like the egg and the, and the egg. It's, it's, it's an eternal struggle. As, 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 the, as the underworld is trying to beat the government, the government is seeking to outrun the underworld. It's an eternal struggle. And no government will concede that uh, struggle to the underworld. If any government does, definitely it will reflect badly on the citizens. So because the government must be on top of all challenges, whatever it takes, whatever is required, we will not allow the criminals to have the upper hand. My sister, my sister, I found you now. I have, I have, as a government, the criminals will not have the upper hand. Whatever, whatever it is, technology, you, analog, you, whatever. You, we will be ahead of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. We'll just have one question only. No, we can't do a follow-up now, please. We'll have other questions. So, with the over five hands here, there are over ten, five, ten questions online. And you know we can't take too much. So, please. We'll take the last set now. Chairman, last set of questions. Yes, person in civil defense works under me. I'm the authority there. And I've told you, we will not concede an inch to the criminals. Thank you.
so, so, so the PS will handle some of the issues before you before you call your dust. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Minister, and um, other distinguished people here, members of the press. Um, we spoke earlier about those who are conferred uh, Nigerian citizenship by Mr. President. In November last year, we had um, a total number of 286 new Nigerians, uh, out of which 208 were by naturalization, while 78 were by registration. Registration meaning spouses of Nigerian citizens who now have become Nigerians. However, going further, the Advisory Committee on Nigerian Citizenship will sit on the 7th of February to consider another 350 applications for naturalization, after which the successful applications will be sent to Mr. President in council for approval. Now down to those Nigerians who renounce their citizenship. So far, we have registered a total of 309. Between 2006 and 2021, 150 Nigerians renounced their citizenship. In 2022 alone, 159 Nigerians renounced their citizenship. Thank you, Minister. Honorable Minister, my name is Felix. Felix Onua, right for Reuters. Um, I'm asking you this question because you are the Minister in Charge of Interior Security. Um, the National State Government addressed a press conference accusing the military of killing some headers last Tuesday through military airstrikes between the borders of Nasarawa and Benue State. What's your reaction to this acquisition? Good morning, Minister. Uh, please, my question is on. My name is Harry Awurumibe. I write for Prompt News, online newspaper. So. Minister, please, um, I want to know how the Ministry of Interior is harnessing um, the services of Vigilante Group of Nigeria. Just a minute. Yeah, Vigilante Group of Nigeria under Commander General of VGN, Navy Captain Omar Bakori retired to stem the high tide of insecurity across Nigeria. I ask because I believe the Vigilante Group and um, NSDC operatives should have been complementing the federal security agencies like the police and ministry in the rural areas because I come from Imo State and I was there a couple of uh, months ago. And I can tell you that I need to procure, I needed to procure the services of vigilante for the two days I slept in my house before I could return to Abuja alive. And I know that from my local government area, in Isi Alamba, not local government of Imo State, that police 
facilities in that local government have all closed down and relocated to the uh, capital city of Were. And the only people who are keeping the villagers um, to be in their homes are vigilantes. So what um, is the Minister of Interior? Because I've looked up the dictionary meaning of interior. You're supposed to be in charge of the uh, internal security of this uh, country. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. I'm Muiti Nolani. I write for Daily Trust newspaper. In less than five weeks now, the Independent National Electoral Commission will conduct another general election. Uh, we know that the Nigeria Police Force is the lead agency in charge of security. But how he cubed is the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps to perform this task ahead of the election. Honorable <laughs> uh, Minister, it's still on, uh, it's just a follow up to, my name is Abdullah Guloma, I write for Blueprint newspaper. It's still a follow up to what Juliana Tao has asked you. Uh, Mr. President has uh, directed that all existing contracts and MOUs on passport production should not be renewed. But the Ministry of uh, Interior drive pleasure in renewing contracts with private companies and then giving jobs that outsourcing contracts that ordinarily can be handled by Nigerian Immigration Service and the security meeting and print. Why is the ministry doing that? Thank you very much. It's not good to, to revel in falsehood. I'm the minister. I've not renewed. I've not signed any. I've not renewed. I've not uh, approved any new contract for any service provider, if that will satisfy you. So what, all that was said could be, could be called balderdash. It's false, absolute false. And I'm not going to enter into any discussion with you on this matter because it's false. Ball dadash, ball dadash, false. Absolute, absolutely false. I've been the minister since 2019. I should, I should renew. If I've, renew, I've not renewed, it's beyond me to renew new contract. It's, not, it's, it's, it's beyond me to unilaterally approve new contract. But if in the wild imagination of people, they, do, they, they, they assume erroneous uh, belief about how the system is run, I leave it to your imagination. I've answered you. Everything you said is false. Absolutely. I've answered appropriately that all that is required is being done to ensure domestication of passport production, passport booklet product, because people even model these things up. There is the booklet, which is not the passport. Passport booklet production is different from even passport issuance itself. It's just that you cannot have passport without the booklet. So, uh, that is done. Uh, let me see other, just to to let the world know that you, 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 the ground on which your, your, your question stood is very weak. Well, a very poignant question was asked about uh, the, the activity of the military on some people that a government claimed to be others. 
I've not received the report, and I, can, I, I cannot comment on any matter for which I've not been fully briefed. So it's just to tell you, we have, uh, Reuters, yes, I've not received reports on that incident. When I do, I'll be able to provide an insight. Vigilante group of Nigeria is not known to us. So that does not mean it's not serving some purposes here and there. But as far as we are concerned, and we are the, our, our agency, Nigerian Civil, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps is the only organization empowered to register any security outfit. I've asked from the CG, Commander General, he told me that it's not known to them. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a contraption by communities. Of course, if that gives them some sense of security, nobody saying they should not use them, but it's not known to us. So I cannot therefore answer your question on that. But I know that governments in the southeastern part of Nigeria put up a network called Ebubuagu. So I, I would like to, I would like you to please see how you can link up with that, with that organization to support your, your quest for security and protection. Uh, but as, 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 as civil defense, as civil defense, we are all over Nigeria protecting security to the best of our ability. Don't let us abuse, don't let us abuse, don't let us, don't let us, don't let us abuse this, uh, this, this uh, opportunity of, uh, of very civilized engagement. Uh, let's, let's be civilized, let's, let's do this in a civilized manner. INEC and us, we are one of several agencies. We are one of several security agencies mobilized to provide security. And I can say without any fear of contradiction that the Nigerian government is very well prepared for the elections coming up in February and March of this year. There will be no mishap. And the ones online, two questions from online. Online, let's have your questions. Okay, I have two questions from Mariam Abubakar, writing for The Cable. And she says, what measures are being taken to boost internal security ahead of elections? You've answered that one. And also mentioned about uh, agencies like NCDC expected to protect critical infrastructure during elections. That's one of our questions. Okay, so. Then um, the other one from Bolaji Ogundele say recently bandits ambushed and killed some NSCDC officer, officials at a mining site. What are your plans to ensure this sort of event never occurs again? Well, the answer is simple. We, 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 we never relax in our preparedness to neutralize criminals. It's an ongoing thing. No society has succeeded in eliminating crimes and criminals. Ours will not be an exception. But what is important is that our, our capacity to curtail, neutralize, apprehend, and bring to justice criminals and therefore end their nefarious acts. Just before the chairman gives his vote of thanks, um, let's please note that the compendium of pictures, data, and um, all information required will be distributed after this uh, session. We'll have uh, copies printed in color so that everyone can get it, so that we can get the numbers correct and also report accurately. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sir. Okay. Um, gentlemen of the press, thank you so much. Uh, we want to thank the Honorable Minister, for such a very exciting and engaging uh, presentation today, and uh, the Permanent Secretary and all the heads of the MDAs that are here. And uh, we believe that uh, all questions have been answered, and we can always assure you that we keep this going. Uh, we believe in the transparency, 
uh, and, and very clearly, the minister has, uh, has been a very excellent uh, 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 believer in that, as we have seen today. Thank you so much, everybody, and God bless you.